Good evening, my name is Joanne Hardesty, and I'm involved with several groups that have been looking at the new Jim Crow. And I'm going to talk about each of them in my allotted time. I'm going to start with the group that I have the longest history with, which is the Albana Ministerial Alliance Coalition for Justice and Police Reform. The group first came together over 10 years ago after the death of Kendra James at the hands of Portland Police. She was a 24-year-old African-American woman in an automobile, in the back seat of an automobile, jumped over the top of the automobile to try to drive away when the police made a traffic stop. The 250-pound officer decided he had no other option but to pull his gun and shoot and kill her. This year has been an anniversary for a lot of community members who have shared the experience that Kendra James' mom uh, experience. In fact, uh, it's been three years since Keith Motis uh, was killed by Portland Police because he was driving a car that was his mom's car. And uh, the gang enforcement officers who stopped him said, he looks like he could be a gang member. And so, I don't know if you have been stopped by gang enforcement officers, but if you are, it's eight to ten officers invited here that pull you over and are extremely intimidating. And so, at the end of the day, Keith Notice was dead because he wore a hoodie and he looked like he might be a gang member. I want to take a moment and take about 30 seconds of silence because Fred Ryan is a casualty of Keith Notice's death. Fred Ryan was the father of Keith Notice and last Tuesday he died uh, after suffering a stroke uh, because for the last three years, Every single one, he's had a vigil at the location where his son was killed. So if we could take 30 seconds, I'll come back and finish my presentation. Thank you so much for that respectful silence. Um, so the impact on community members when police officers act in a way that is inappropriate, that's aggressive, that is uh, damaging to community members, the impact is just not to the young person or person who was stopped. The impact is felt by the entire community because the ripple effect of having a police force that you don't trust a police force that comes out and brutalizes you rather than providing help um, is what many people in our community experience. Um, and so the AMA Coalition for Justice and Police Reform came together again after the death of Aaron Campbell, who you may remember was shot in the back by a sniper um, while he was in talks with a negotiator after um, him just being devastated because his younger brother had died earlier that day from liver failure. So I'm telling you stories, and these are stories of real people, real lives, real deaths that have taken place in our community. And if you listen to the public record of these deaths, what you hear is that the police did nothing wrong and everything was fine. But I'm here to question, to challenge you. Um, we have what they tell me is a very well-trained police force, and so if they're so well-trained, why do so many community members who are unarmed end up dead? I'm concerned because the Department of Justice, the AMA Coalition for Justice and Police Reform, invited the Department of Justice to come to town. Uh, it seems like it's been forever ago now, but it was, in, uh, it was right after Aaron Campbell's death. We sent a letter to the Department of Justice saying we would like you to come to town and investigate and tell us whether or not Portland police officers are treating African Americans differently than they're treating other people in the community. Well, the Department of Justice did come to town and did a 14-month investigation, but when they came to town, they did a bait and switch. They didn't investigate whether or not African American civil rights were being violated. Instead, they decided to investigate whether or not people with mental health issues or perceived to have mental health issues, um, uh, civil rights had been violated. Well, guess what? their civil rights had been violated. 
But you wouldn't know it if you only read the headlines. I would encourage you to go to the Department of Justice website and read the investigation of Portland Place. If you'd read the 53-page report like I had, what you would know, gee, that time goes fast. I'm already at a minute. <laughs> gee, pressure, pressure. I'm not used to speaking a six-minute allotment. Um, so anyway, uh, the Department of Justice report is on their website. Tomorrow there will be a press conference where the City of Portland, the DOJ, and the Portland Police Association will join hands and say they've reached agreement on the settlement agreement. But I want you to know that there is no agreement until a fairness hearing happens, which the judge, Michael Simon, will schedule so that the public will, for the first time, be able to weigh in on this agreement. And so I'd like to tell you about uh, the uh, Portland campaign to end the new Jim Crow, but I'm out of time, so I'm sure someone will ask me a question about that when we get to question and answer period. I really appreciate your attention and thank you so much for being here tonight. It makes a difference when people, when the 98% of the community that has no clue what's going on, when you show up, it makes a difference. So thank you for being here tonight.